हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू माई चैनल इंजीनियर्स अकेडमी डू सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल इफ़ यू हैव एंड डन इट येट नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम विच सेज दैट द वर्टिकल मास्ट सपोर्ट्स द फोर किलोमीटर फोर्स एंड इज कंस्ट्रेन बाई द टू फिक्स केबल्स बी सी एंड बी डी एंड बाई अ बॉल एट साकेट कनेक्शन एट ए कैलकुलेट द टेंशन टी वन इन बी डी कैन दिस बी इनकम्पलिश एकम्पलिश बाई यूजिंग ओनली वन इक्वेशन ऑफ इक्वेलिब्रियम so we have to find this t1 tension in this bd cable and this mast is supported by this 4 newton force and these two cables and here at a we have the ball and socket joint so at a we can have the only support force reactions since the ball and socket joint cannot support the moments so let's say that here we have a x reaction let's say Uh, sorry this is this will be a y since this is along the y axis let's say here we have a x and along the z axis we have let's say a z so this is a z now to accomplish this by using only one equation we have to select an axis about which we will find the moment so that t2 is cancelled since we want to find t1 so we have to find an axis about which we find the moment in order to cancel t2 so as we can see that this t2 is in intersecting with the x axis so if we find the summation of the moment about the x axis is equals to 0 so this equation will eliminate t2 out of the equation since t2 is intersecting with the x axis so yes we can accomplish this uh, we can find t1 by only using this summation of moment about x equals to 0 since t2 intersect with the x axis and if we apply the summation of moment about the x axis is equal to 0 so uh, this equation will not entertain t2 so yes we can accomplish this but before applying this equation we have to find this t1 vector so t1 vector t1 vector is equal to t1 magnitude which is unknown and the unit vector from b to d since if i show the tension in t1 and t2 so t1 is going to act from b to d and t2 is going to act from b to c so the unit vector is from b to d and similarly we can write that t1 and the unit vector from b to d is the position vector from b to d divided by the magnitude of the position vector from b to d so this t1 t1 magnitude and the position vector from b to d can be determined by moving from b along the x y and z axis to reach that point d so from b we need to travel 5 plus 5 that is 10 mm in the negative z direction that is in the negative k so i will write minus 10 k so by moving uh, 10 meters in the negative z we will reach this point a then we have to travel 4 meters this 4 meters in the positive x so that is in the positive i so i will write plus 4 i then after this point we have to travel this 4 meters in the positive y so i will write plus 4 j and then once we reach here we have to travel 2 meters in the positive k so again i will write plus 2 k so if we add both of these minus 10 k plus 2 k so this will give us minus 8 k so i will write that this is minus 8 k so now this is our position vector from b to d and now we have to find the magnitude of this position vector so we have to take square of all these components and then taking the square root that is by applying the pythagoras theorem so this will give us the magnitude this is 4 square plus 4 square plus 8 square this gives us 9.796 797 so we can say that this is approximately equal to 9.798 this is approximately 9.798 now we can write that t1 vector now if i multiply this t1 inside and divide each component by this magnitude so we will have 
फोर डिवाइडेड बाय नाइन पॉइंट सेवन नाइन एट टी वन आई प्लस फोर डिवाइडेड बाय नाइन पॉइंट सेवन नाइन एट टी वन जे माइनस एट डिवाइडेड बाय नाइन पॉइंट सेवन नाइन एट T1 k. So now if I draw the components of this T1, so this T1 has one component in the positive i, in the positive j, and in the negative k. So let's say this is one of the component of the T1 which is acting along the positive x-axis. This is T1 x. Similarly, uh, T2, uh, the y component is acting in the positive j. This is positive j. So this is T one y, since this is positive, right? And this is negative, so it has one component is acting in the negative z. So this is T one z. Now we are going to apply this equation. The summation of the moment, the summation of the moment about the x-axis is equal to zero, and the counterclockwise moment is considered to be positive. Since we are finding the moment about x, so this t one z is passing through that x axis, so it's not going to produce the moment about the uh, x axis. So this will not come into our equation. Similarly, this t one x is parallel to the x axis, so it is not going to produce the moment about the x axis. So this will not come into our equation, and this will not come into our equation. And t two is passing through that uh, x axis, so it will not come into our equation. That is why we haven't determined t two vector. So this T y is going to produce the moment about the x axis, and this four kilonewton force is producing the moment about the x axis. And remember that now we are considering the scalar approach. We are we will be using m equals to f times the perpendicular distance. So now, as we can see that uh, this T one y is going to rotate this whole system about the x axis in this direction, like this. So if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction. so our thumb will point out in the negative x direction so this means that this t1 y is producing the clockwise moment about the x axis so i will write t1 y and it is producing the clockwise moment so we have to write minus sign and the perpendicular distance of this t1 y from that x axis is, is this 5 meters plus 5 meters is 10 meters which is the length of the mast so i will multiply this with 10 and similarly this 4 kilonewton force is rotating uh, this whole system about the x axis in this direction like this so if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out in the positive x direction this means that this 4 kilonewton force is producing the counter clockwise moment since the thumb is pointing out in the positive x direction so we will write plus and that is 4 kilonewton the force is 4 kilonewton and its moment arm its perpendicular distance from the x axis is 5 meters so i will multiply this with 5 and this is equal to 0 so now from this we can write that minus t1 y into 10 is equal to minus 4 into 5 and if we divide both side by minus sign so this will cancel out and from this we can write that t1 y equals to 4 into 5 which is 20 Divided by ten, so T one y equals to two kilonewton. Remember, and now we know that this is T one y, so we can write that T one y is four divided by nine point seven nine eight T one. This is equal to two kilonewton. And if I cross multiply this two with this and divided by four, so we will get T one. So T one is equal to Two multiplied by nine point seven nine eight divided by four. So this is two multiplied by nine point seven nine eight divided by four. This gives us T one equals to four point eight nine nine. So T one is equal to four point eight. Nine nine kilonewton, or we can say that this is approximately equal to four point nine kilonewton. So this is the magnitude of T one which was required, and we have determined this T one by using only this one condition of equilibrium. 
So yes, this can be accomplished by using only one equation of equilibrium and T1 magnitude is 4.9 kN. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Do subscribe my channel if it helps in your learning.